What is up guys? How's it going? So I wanted to show you today how to use data assets with Able and also do it in a way that will not disrupt your work in any way and you won't need to refactor shit, hopefully, um, depending on how far along you are, obviously. Um, but yeah, so if you don't know what data assets are, um, they're probably the most complicated part of the process. So I'll walk you through them and I'll make the, it first and then for the second part, it's really pretty simple. So um, I'll just show you the functions I've made and go through them because they're they're really really short. Um, so yeah, data assets. What are they? Uh, the way I look at them, they're kind of like smart um, data tables, almost, but not really. Like they're not in any way, but sort of. Um, so yeah, it's just a way you can store lots of information, which you can uh, save and load and stuff. Um, and then you can pull that data at runtime and uh, use it. So an example of that is my data asset here. Um, I have my class and my damage in it. Um, so for my player data, my base ability, that's holding my base ability child. So this is like my ability class, and then it has a damage of 10. So what, what, it's kind of like it's kind of like a data table right i can hold that information in there that is relevant to that ability and then later on we're going to be able to get it um yeah so let's let's create a, a data asset first of all um if we just go back to my my whatever this is that's trash um and what i'll do is i'll just make a data asset and we need a primary data asset um you won't have these because i've obviously made them so you'll just have the primary data asset and we'll call it something tutorial asset, whatever. Um, and then you want to put something in here, right? So um, these variables are going to be sort of like the fields in a data table. So, you know, you just hold in here everything you want. Now, one special thing that data assets can do is they can have functions and you can run those functions um, to change your outcome. So, um, say for example because you want these to be sort of semi-generic right so you might have something in here like whether the ability is channeling or not um and you know that makes sense but then what about something like league of legends where um uh you have an option in right and you can make everything quick cast well you can come in here and write a function that says okay am i channeling if it says channeling no um, or channeling yes, whichever one, just just check it against the option. Because if because if it says no, but um, if it's not quick cast, but I want it to be quick cast and the option has quick cast ticked, then I can change that function before it comes out of the data asset and oh, it is applied. Right? Um, you, you, yeah, it's it's got some really cool stuff you can do with it. I use it f also for determining. Um, what stats can go into what loop. Um, so if you see, um, in my inventory, for example, if I come over to my graphical stat data asset, um, I have these stats here and inside these stats is a, um, relevant item tag, which has like braces, boots, whatever. So my, my, I, my stat, for example, increased critical strike damage might only have a relevant item tag of, uh, braces if you're playing like Diablo 3, right? So when I check to see if my stat is valid, I'm checking it against the item because this uh, this data asset can run this function and I can put an input in. And so it's so this data asset will only ever return a stat that is valid for the item that I've chosen to do it on. So you can do some really clever stuff. Um, they're really cool. And we can actually wrap this up really easy. So there's a couple of things you're gonna wanna remember. Um, first of all, yeah, it's creating the tutorial asset was really easy, right? Blueprint class, and then you just put um, asset data asset, and then primary asset data asset. Um, to actually make the asset, you want to come into, you want to right click, come into miscellaneous, and then you're going to choose data asset here. And we're going to choose one of these, which in this case would be the tutorial one, or you know whatever you've just made. Um, and now this is available to fill out. So if we come in here and compile this. So we have our new bar zero. If I open this up now, we're gonna have new bar zero and we can change that, right? Cool, so you know how to make a data asset. Now we need to learn how to use it. 
Um, so the first thing you want to do is going to come into projects and you're going to want to just put asset man. You need the asset man because you're going to need an asset manager. Um, and all you need to do here, you can kind of see what I've done, right? So ability data asset, I've named it. Um, I've sold it what BP class to use, the asset base class, and then I've given it a directory and you can have multiple directories. So, um, for example, uh, oh, actually, so, you know, um, I have my, my able one here, but then realistically, I'm also going to need, um, the player one and the AI one, right? Uh, cause I'm, I've, that's just the way I've split them up. So you'll need to put them all in, um, like that. And then what that's going to do is it's going to apply them all to, uh, the asset registry, which we can then use later to spawn them. So, um, I can just leave that. That's fine. Um, so in here, I've made a, um, ability component basically, um, it has four functions on it and this is just on my base character, right? So my player character has, uh, both the able ability thing from Matt, as well as my own able ability component. Um, and I just call on this to basically do my own able stuff, right? So, um, fires the able activate ability is just a, it's just one function instead of me needing to do this all the time. I'm sure you all have something like that sorted by now. Um, but we're going to do a couple of other things. So. The first thing we need to do is we need to initiate abilities because we've saved all these, we've got all these data assets now, but we need to be able to get them. So uh, let's just call this. Uh... So first thing we want to do is we want to get our get asset registry. This is the most important thing. This is um, basically just a big list that holds all those data assets, and then we can call on that to get what we want back. So we're going to get the registry and we're going to get assets by class. Um, and it's going to get all assets by class. And the way we're going to make this really easy is we're going to um, make a local variable and then make the variable type the thing you just made. So in my case, I could say ability and then find ability data asset BP. We'll make that an object reference. And then um, to make, so so what you want to do, you just need to put any of these in basically um, because it just needs the the ability class. We don't really care what's in there. Um, and then we'll get the class, we'll get the display name, and then we'll pass that in. And the reason we're doing that is just so this is always 100% of the time going to be an ability data type asset. It will always be that because it's the only thing you can ever get. Um, and we that's what we want, right? We want it to just get all of the ability types and just spam them all out. Um, so then once we've got all the abilities, we're going to go for each loop and we're going to get the asset. Now what I have inside of my abilities at the moment, if I'm going to show you, um, is I have two things. So I have the, uh, the able thing and I have the damage, right? So in here, inside my component, I'm, I've made a map, which is a able ability class uh, with the data asset information. And I'm coming through and I'm saying, okay, for every asset we have, I want you to loop them. I'm going to get the asset because this is the asset data, um, the des asset data structure. structure. So we're going to get that asset and then we're going to cast it to whatever our data asset is. And then out of that, we can now get whatever information we want. So I can get that damage value and I could get anything else that I put in here. Um, but the one that's important to us right now is the ability class, because this is what we're going to use to be our key. Um, so we're going to then add that to our map and we'll just fill in the things. So we have our map of ability class and the ability data asset. And now what we have when we load the game, because if we put this, you know, obviously on begin play, I have my initiate abilities. Um, what you're going to get is it's going to loop through every data asset you have. It's going to save it in this map with a key of the ability, um, the ability uh, class. So whenever we call on something later, um, we can get that really easily. And the way we're going to do that is with this. And it's it's really this easy, right? So all we need to do is we uh, we look at this map and we find the key we want, which is the ability class, and then it gives us our data asset. So all I need to do 
is come into an ability. So if I come into my base ability, I have a couple of things sorted here. I have my DA, which is my data asset, and I have my owner. I have some macros. So on the start, I'm setting my owner right, get owner, get owner, controller, control form, base character, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then I'm getting my data asset, and I'm setting these on begin play, um, on ability start. Now, uh, these are inheritable, um, and so are all these. Um, so if I come into, I have one here, um, a child of it. This is a child of the same thing. Um, you can see that I still have the variables. Uh, the functions are gone, but you don't really need them anyway because they are part of the, the parent, um, the macros rather, sorry. Um, but yeah, so if you override on ability start, don't forget to do the parent on ability start. Uh, to get that to come up, you just right click on ability start or any event actually like this um, and add called parent. And there you go. Um, that's just to make sure that we always have the, you know, this stuff happening, right? We always need this because we always need our variables. Um, and that's pretty much it. So you have, you you set your owner and then you have this, you set the, the, um, the data asset. So what we'll do is we'll get our owner, which we just set. We'll call to our ability component and we'll get the ability data asset. And we know what asset we're getting because we're inside the ability. So we can just call ourselves, get our own class, and we get the outcome of whatever data asset is uh, mapped to this ability we're currently using. So then you're all good. Uh, so now what you can do is any literally anywhere in your ability, you can just drag out your DA variable and you can just go get your damage or whatever, literally whatever information you have in there, you can just get it now. Um, we haven't had to mess with much. We've literally just uh, made a few functions that kind of um, wrap that up, right? We've initialized it, put it all inside a variable. We've then made a get function that's super easy. And then inside our ability, we've just made a, um, uh, a, a function that we can quickly uh, set our thing with that um, we can do every time we start. So yeah. Uh, that's pretty much it. Now you can just go into that data asset, add whatever information you want, put whatever variables you need in there, and just call on it um, without needing to, you know, mess around with a bunch of stuff. And it really allows you to easily change it and um, mess with, like uh, just just tackle all your ability stats in a super easy way. And if you ever make, need to make a new ability, you know, you need to make the new data asset. You you just dupe this off, right? You just duplicate this, and then you have a new one. And it's just in there. It's in your pool of abilities now um, because that data reg registry is going to always look at all of them. So um, you can use this data asset registry to also fill up like um, uh, like a spell book, for example. So you can have subcategories, right? You can have like the mage ones because if you see um, if you see here, where is it? My initiate. I have a get asset of all class. I'm using the search sub subclasses, right? So this is always going to do all of them. But you could do a subclass for just mage ones, and you could put the mage asset in there, um, and it would, and then not search the subclasses, right? And then you could fill up the mage spellbook with just that, or like you know, there's a lot you could do with it, and it will automatically populate, automatically just kind of just kind of work. So anyway, yeah, um, I hope some of that makes sense. If you need any help. Just do let me know, and uh, I hope that is fun, because I really enjoy them. So, see you guys. Have fun.